Hello everybody. In our lesson for today, we are going to learn completing the square, which is a, it's a method used to solve a quadratic equation when factoring it is not working. Completing the square, it is based in changing a quadratic equation into a perfect square trinomial, which has the form of a square plus 2ab plus b square, which represents the perfect binomial, square binomial, a plus b square. It can be also minus 2ab, and then it will be the, the binomial square, it will be a minus b square. When the equation it is given in the standard form and factoring is not working, as I said, one of the methods is this completing the square. The steps that we have to follow in completing the square are, first of all, we check the a coefficient to be 1. Sometimes it is given 1 and sometimes it is not. In the case A, it is not 1, then each term in this equation, we will divide it by A, that we can get x squared, A coefficient x squared 1. In the next step, we will isolate the constant term from the variable terms, so we will take it from the left side of equals and move it into the right side. But when we do this, do not forget to change its sign. In the next step, Add the square of half of the coefficient of x to both of the sides of the equality. You will obtain the perfect square, but the binomial square. And then to continue, we will use the square root on both of the sides of the equation. Let's see. minus 5 equals to 0. To solve the equation by completing the square, what are we going to do? In step 1, we said the a coefficient, it has to be 1. In this case, the a coefficient, it is 1. So we keep it as it is. In the second step, we will isolate the constant term. The and term is negative 5, and to isolate it from the x terms, it means to take it from left of equals and move it into the right of equals using the inverse of the given operation. So we will do plus 5 on both of the sides. And we get x squared minus equals to 5. In the next step, we will add on both of the sides the square of the half of the b coefficient. The b coefficient is the coefficient of x, which in our case is negative 6. So we put negative 6 over 2, all of x squared, and we will add it on both of the sides of the equality. So we write negative 6 over 2, all of x squared, and negative 6 over 2, all of x squared. We get its simplest form. And we will find x squared minus 6x plus negative 6 over 2, it is negative 3 squared equals 5 plus negative 6 over 2, it is negative 3 squared, it will be 9. And 5 plus 9 equals to 14. In the left side of equals, the perfect square trinomial. So to get the binomial square from here, we will check the first term and the last term. From these two terms, we will write x minus 3 all of x squared equals to 14. The x now, it's inside of the square. So to isolate it, we will use the inverse of the square, which is the square root on both of the sides. And it will be x minus 3 equals positive or negative square root of 14. 
14, it is not a perfect square and we cannot simplify it. And now what is it left to isolate the variable? We'll do plus 3 on both of the sides. At the end, x equals positive negative square root 14 plus 3. Let's try more. Negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 48 equals to 0. First of all, we can very easily observe that between the three terms, the negative 3, it is a common factor. More than that we can complete the square, we said the a coefficient, it has to be 1. In our case, a is negative 3. Remind it to you that a is the coefficient of the x squared. So, as long as negative 3, to make it 1, we will divide it by itself. When we do divide by one term, we do the same thing for all of the terms in the equality. In the equality. And we will find x squared positive 6 be a negative 3. Negative to negative equals to 0. In the next step we said, we will isolate the constant term. The constant term is 15, so we will do minus 15 on both of the sides. And we will find x squared minus 3 plus here, it will be equals negative 16 plus whatever it will be added in the left side of equals, we have to add it in the right side. Now, to add, we'll take the b coefficient, negative 2, make it half, divide it by 2, and square it. Negative 2 to 2, it will be negative 1 square, and this one will add it on both of the sides. From the first term and the last term in the first term squared trinomial, from these two terms we get the binomial square. So we work with the base of a, it will be x minus 1, all of this square equals negative 16 plus 1, it will be a negative 15. Square root on both. We'll get x minus 1 equals positive or negative. Square root negative 15. Negative 15, we can factor it as negative 1 times 15. And square root of negative 1, we know equals to i. Remember that i equals square root of negative 1. So then we can write i square root of 15. We cannot simplify it. Plus 1 on both of the sides. It will be equal to 1 squared or minus i square root of 15. So the solutions, the roots, they are complex numbers. 2x squared plus 8x equals to negative 4. That we can complete the square we said. The, e, the a, the coefficient of x squared, it has to be 1. In our case, a is 2. So to make it 1, we will divide it by itself. And each term in the equality, it will be divided by its root to balance the equation. We go down and we write the simplest form. x squared plus 4x equals to negative 2. In the next step, we have to add in both sides of this equality one term here. This is that why it's called to complete, because the third term to complete, to make it perfect square trinomial, we are going to find it. So I'm going to write on the other slide. So it will be x squared plus 40 plus something equals negative 2 plus. That's something. So, how, what do we do to find it? The b coefficient, we will divide it by 2, and then we will change it into 2 squared, into the 2 squared, 
All of these squares equals negative 2 plus 4, it is 2. Square root on both of the sides. It will be equals 4. Isolate the variable. We'll get that it's equal to negative 2 plus or minus square root of 2. equals to zero. In the next step, we will isolate the constants. Plus three, plus three. It will be x squared plus nine x plus to complete equals to six. Whatever was added with the left side, we will do the same in the right side to balance the equality. And to find the missing term, we will take the equalization, divide it by 2, and square it. This term we will add it on both of the sides, and that also equals all of its square. Don't make it decimal. Keep working with fraction. It will be much easier for you. From the first and the last term in the trinomial, from here we'll get the binomial square. It will be x plus 9 over 2, all of x squared equal. Here I will simplify it separate. It will be 3 plus 81 over 4. So over 1 times 4 times 4. So it will be 12 plus 81. 93 over 4. Square root on both of the sides. X plus 9 over 2 equals positive or negative. 3 is not a perfect square and it cannot be simplified, so we will keep it square root of 93. Square root of 4 is a 2, so all over 2. Isolate the x minus 9 over 2, minus 9 over 2 on both of the sides. It will be x equals the two fractions, they have the same denominator, so over 2. Positive negative square root 93 minus 9. X squared plus 12X plus 11 equals to 0. The A coefficient already it is 1. Now all we have to do is to isolate the constant term. So minus 11 minus 11 on both of the sides. And in the next step, we will complete the square. Let's see how. x squared plus 12x plus something equals negative 11 plus the same thing. To get the missing term, we'll take the b coefficient square, divide it by 2, and square it. It means x squared. So we will add it on both of the sides. From the first and the last term, we'll get the binomial x plus x. All of x squared equals. Let's see. Negative 11 plus 6 squared is a 36. It will be equals to 25. Square root on both of the sides. It will be x plus x equals. Positive or negative 5. Minus 6. Minus 6. 
x it will be equals 5 minus 6 negative 1 negative 5 minus 6 negative 11 so we got two solutions Solve the equation again by completing the square. So, this is square. Plus 20 equals to 27. The A coefficient is 2. To make it 1, we divide it by itself. And we do the same thing for all of the terms. Already, the constant term is isolated from the variable term. So, it will be square plus plus something equals 27 to 3 is 9 plus the same thing. To find the missing term, the B coefficient, we will divide it by 2 and square it. And this equals 2 squared. And we'll add it on both of the sides. From the first and the last term, we will get the binomial x plus 2 squared equals 2 squared it's a 4 and plus 9 is 13. Square root on both of the sides it will be x plus 2 equals positive or negative square root 13. Minus 2 minus 2 to isolate the variable it will be x equals positive negative square root 13 minus 2. Plus 6 is minus 14 equals to 0. So a coefficient has to be 1 in our case it's 2. So we divide it by itself. Do the same thing for all the terms. And we find x squared plus 6 over 2 it is 3 is minus 14 over 2 it's a 7 equals to 0. Plus 7 on both of the sides. We'll find x squared plus 3 plus something equals 7 plus we add the same thing. To get the missing term that we can complete, we take the b coefficient, divide it by 2 and square it. 3 over 2, we cannot simplify it. Leave it as it is. Keep working with the fact And the last term, we get the binomial x plus 3 over 2. All of it squared equals, let's simplify the right side. It will be 7 plus 9 over 4. Over 1, over 1, get the same denominator times 4. 7 times 4, 28. 28 plus 9, it's a 37 over 4. Square root on both of the sides to isolate the variable. It will be x plus 3 over 4 equals positive or negative. Square root of 37. 37, it's, an, it's not a perfect square, so we cannot simplify it. Keep it as it is over. Square root of 4, it is 2. Minus 3 over 2 on both of the sides x equals, denominator is the same, so x it will be equal to square root of 37 minus 3. Write the equation in vertex form and identify the maximum or minimum value of the graph. So we can use the completing the square to convert the quadratic from the standard form to convert it into the vertex form. And we follow, we'll do the same, we'll follow the same step to step. We have y equals x squared plus 15 minus 6. We have, first of all, we look for a coefficient to be 1. In our case, it is 1. In the second step, the constant term, we isolate it from the variable. So we do plus 6 
on both of the sides. It will be one plus two equals eight. Four plus six eight. Now we will complete the square. So we'll do plus here something. And the same thing we added one side, we have to add it on the other side. And to find the missing term, the B coefficient, we will divide it by 2 and we will square it, which equals 3 squared. This term, we have to add it on both of the sides. From left to right, we simplify. The C term is 9 and 9 plus so it will be 15 plus y equals. From the first and the last step, we'll get the binomial x plus 3 squared. We solve the equation for y. Minus 15. So this is the vertex form of the quadratic function. Let me remind this to you. A equals A. X minus A squared plus K. From the vertex form, we can say that the vertex of the parabola has coordinates negative 3, negative 15. The A coefficient, it is positive, which means parabola opens upward. Vertex, it will be the lowest point in the graph. That means that vertex, the parabola, will have a, will have a minimum, which is given by negative 15. Y equals negative 2x squared plus 20x minus 42. So, to write it in the vertex form, we will use the completing the square. But first of all, the a coefficient will be 1. So we divide by negative 2 every single term in the equality, including the y. It will be negative y over 2 equals x squared minus 10x plus 21. The constant, we will isolate it from the variable x. So we will do minus 21 on both of the sides. And we will write. It will be negative 21 minus y over 2. Now we will add that we we'll get x squared here. Minus 10x plus something. So whatever it will be added one side, we will add it on the other side. Now negative 10 over 2, all of it square, it is negative 5 square. So this is what we add on both of the sides. Negative 5 squared, it is 25. 25 minus 21, it means 4 minus y over 2 equals. From the first and the last term, it will be x minus 5 squared. Square root on both of the sides. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. We solve for y. Sorry. We have to solve for y. We have the function. So we do minus minus 4, so negative y over 2 equals x minus 5 squared minus 4. The symbol to write function, it is y, so we have to solve the equation for y. It is divided by negative 2, we'll do times the negative 2 for each term inside. So we'll do the times negative 2 for y. It will be 1 equals times negative 2 for the binomial. So negative 2 times x minus 5 squared and times negative 2 for negative 4, which it will be positive. The a coefficient, it is negative. 
which means parabola opens downward and it has a highest point which is called vertex and represents the maximum. The vertex of the parabola, the hk coordinates are 5 and 8 and this is the maximum. Thank you.